In today's video, we're going to talk about port extensions on a VNA. We'll talk about what they are, why you might need to use them, and how you set them up on the Nano VNA. This is a bit of a follow-on of video 313 where we talked about user calibration in a VNA. You remember that uh, user calibration corrects for systematic errors in the instrument itself, things like frequency response and tracking, source match, and leakage and crosstalk terms. But the other important thing that the user calibration does is establishes the calibration or measurement plane. And this is essentially the, the plane, if you will, where you attach your open, short, and load when doing, in this case, say, a single port uh, calibration. And what that does is it makes sure that the magnitude and phase of the response is normalized to that point so that we're only measuring the effect of magnitude and phase of the device connected at this location. But what if the device you're testing doesn't attach the same way as your open, short, and load standards that you use for calibration? Maybe you need some kind of a fixture, or maybe some, an RF adapter, or even a short length of cable to connect your device under test to the VNA. Well, this actually could present a problem, potentially, when you, if you want to accurately measure the complex impedance looking into your device. The reason for this is that each of these devices that you add to the VNA port beyond where you made your calibration will add an additional delay or phase shift uh, compared to where that uh, calibration was done. And that is essentially going to alter the impedance that is seen by the VNA. Well, the answer is to use a port extension. This allows you to move the calibration plane or extend it to the end of your fixture, cable, adapter, or whatever it is that you needed to add in order to connect your DUT. Now this can be very handy, but it's not perfect because this port extension really assumes that the extension or the movement of that plane is simply an extension of the 50 ohm line that was already part of uh, the VNA itself. It doesn't take into account for any impedance discontinuities of the adapter or the fixture. So if you've got uh, some kind of an oddball fixture that's got some impedance bumps in it or something like that and it's not perfect or the adapters uh, are a little bit unusual or you're, you're going to some flying leads on the output of an RF connector, it's not going to account for that impedance change. It's assuming that the extension is just an extension of the 50 ohm line. But for most of what we do in the amateur radio hobby or, or for other hobby use, it'll work just fine. And in many cases, the adapters are all 50 ohms, so it's actually pretty close. One issue with some of the nano VNAs are that uh, they don't use the same terminology that the uh, RF industry uses for VNAs. For example, this would normally be called port 1 and port 2. The nano VNA calls it channel 0 and channel 1. And of course, uh, the nano VNA doesn't call port extensions port extensions. The nano VNA refers to this as electrical delay. So let's go see how to use that. Let's take a look at the effect an RF adapter would have on the complex impedance observed on the reflection port. Okay, the setup here is a 50 kilohertz to 900 megahertz sweep, uh, freshly calibrated as indicated by the capital C for the calibration here. There's an open sitting uh, here right now. And uh, so since we're only looking at the reflection properties, I just have three traces turned on. The log magnitude of the reflection coefficient, or S11, is riding here along the top. Okay, essentially we've got uh, sitting at uh, 0 dB, essentially across the whole frequency range, essentially a perfect reflection. Uh, I've also got the Smith chart, or complex impedance, shown. Uh, here's the green trace, and that's indicated right here. And you note that we don't see any kind of an arc, which means that over this entire frequency range, this looks like a perfect open. And then the third trace I have is the phase of the impedance of this open across frequency. Again, flat, because that's essentially our calibration plane. Now, if I simply add this male-to-male uh, -male, uh, SMA extension, or adapter here, you'll notice a couple of changes in the traces. You may have noticed that the phase response has now got a tilt to it. And the reason for that is that at, at low frequencies, like 50 kilohertz way down here at the end, the length of this is really, really tiny with respect to the wavelength at 50 kilohertz. So it represents, you know, a fraction of a degree of delay. However, as the frequency goes up, this delay now becomes a larger, larger portion and essentially a measurable delay. We get all the way out to 900 meg and we're looking at about uh, 50 degrees of delay uh, across that RF adapter at, at 900 megahertz. 
Now this is also reflected in the Smith chart. In fact, you can see when I move the marker out to about 900 megahertz, we can see that now instead of being sitting at the open circuit, as we still have an open at the end here, uh, we're now sitting uh, down here on the Smith chart because we have rotated around here because of that that phase shift means that looking into this end of the adapter doesn't look like a perfect open anymore. It's got a little bit more of a complex impedance. And since all we really did was extend the 50 ohm line, we can add that electrical length in and effectively extend our calibration plane out to here and do that port extension. So here's how you do that. So we bring up the menu, go to display, and go to scale and this is where we find electrical delay. Now of course you can make some measurements and run some calculations to figure out what the exact number should be or you can just play with it experimentally. So let's, we got a pretty short little adapter here. Let's just add in say oh, 100 picoseconds of electrical delay and see where we wind up. So with 100 picoseconds of delay we can see we've flattened the phase out. It's not quite back to zero. We're sitting now at about 21 degrees, and you also, also can see that the arc that we draw out on the Smith chart has now been reduced. So 100 picoseconds got us part of the way there, but not all the way. Okay, 100 picoseconds wasn't enough. Let's, uh, let's add 200 picoseconds instead. So we'll dial in 200, 200 picoseconds, and let's see where we wind up. Well, it looks like it puts the phase at about 10 degrees, and we're drawing an arc up in the opposite direction. So 100 picoseconds wasn't enough, 200 picoseconds is a little too much. I've iterated around a little bit with this and I think 165 picoseconds is going to be really close. So 165 picoseconds got us to a phase of just uh, about one degree at about 900 megahertz. Let's go all the way out to the end there. Yeah, 1.4 degrees uh, and we're really close. So that's probably close enough. We could probably fine-tune it by another couple of picoseconds. But this is the effect of now adding an electrical delay to effectively do a port extension to now make our reference plane right at the end of this connector. So now whenever we connect here, we can measure the complex impedance of that and now have a proper phase measurement of that impedance because we've extended our calibration plane to here. In this example, I used a fairly wide frequency range for a reason. I wanted to show you the, fa the fact that adding these extensions and uh, adapters and things like that generally won't matter much at relatively low frequencies because the wavelength, the length of these adapters is really small with respect to the wavelength of the signal at those low frequencies. But the higher you go in frequency, the more even small little adapters will actually start to matter. So after doing your calibration and hooking up whatever adapters you have to get to your particular device under test, take a look at on the Smith chart for example what an open or a short looks like at your device to make sure you're sitting at the you know three o'clock or nine o'clock position on the Smith chart. Uh, if your device you might be say an antenna embedded on a printed circuit board for example you might have a way of actually creating an open or a short. You can even go down with the blade of an X-Acto knife right at the input of your antenna for example and create a short on the board and see if that winds up uh, showing up at, at the nine o'clock position on the Smith chart as it should. Uh, if not, then you may be able to apply port extensions to actually find out, to move that reference plane right to that spot on the board and then make that your new uh, calibration plane so that when you measure the complex impedance, you can measure the complex impedance of that antenna structure, for example, so that you can design a matching network to be placed right there. So by changing that electrical delay parameter, we can effectively affect a port extension on the Nano VNA. So I hope you learned something about uh, what a port extension is, uh, why you might use them, and how you effectively apply it on a device like this. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And uh, thanks again as always for watching.